unlike some of my smart 20-something students nowadays, uh, I cer certainly was and never, uh, never could be as smart as them because I would never have thought of myself as a CEO in my 20s. I learned via apprenticeship. I mean, I had a pretty long 10 or 15 year incubation period before the Peter Principle caught up with me and I became a, a, a CEO of a, a, a startup. But I did learn from some really, really smart people. And, um, you know, the, the first lesson was about getting out of the building. Um, I remember I was with a company called Ardent, um, which was making a supercomputer at the time. And I was a one of the many co-founders and VP of marketing. And um, we were in an internal planning meeting talking about the features that this machine should have. And uh, the whole company was in the planning meeting. So there were, might have been 15 or 20 of us at the time. And this was a company built by some really serious people. Um, they had been in a mini computer company called Digital Equipment. They'd been selling to scientists for years, you know, decades before. Some of the engineers were kind of the early engineers and computer architecture. And we we're talking about the graphic subsystem. And uh, I happened to be listening to conversation. I decided I hadn't heard the sound of my voice in a while. And I piped up with, well, I think the system ought to have, I remember, double buffered, you know, 24-bit graphics. And like the conversation stops. And the CEO looks at me and said, what did you say? And I thought he was so impressed with like what I had to say. You know, I repeated myself, and the people who knew the CEO were, I, in hindsight, I realized their eyes were getting wide. You know, I missed the the visual cues of "Don't open your mouth," and I repeated it. And I will never forget this moment because it's over twenty now. No, excuse me, it's over thirty years ago. He put his face about three inches from mine, just like a drill sergeant in the Marines and started screaming at my face, saying, you've just embarrassed the entire career of marketing. You're an embarrassment as a marketeer. There's a whole room of people who've just spent their entire careers selling to these customers. You don't know a damn thing about what you're talking about. Get the hell out of my company. And like, I still am friends with um, one of the uh, participants in the room, a guy named John Rubenstein, who went off to built the iPod at Apple and run hardware engineering for jobs and then CEO of Palm. And we were just still talking about, it. we remember that exact moment because he said, my face turned white. And I looked at that door and the door frame was about this, this high off the ground. I felt that big that I could walk out underneath it. That's how, that's how humiliated I felt. And, and I thought I had just been fired from my startup. So he looked at me and then looked at the VP of sales and said, both of you get out of the building and don't come back until you understand what customers really need and you could add some value to this conversation. And right then, 30 years ago, was the beginning of customer discovery. And we spent the next year getting out of the building and I learned the beginning of what became the core of customer development is, you know what, you, there are no facts inside the building. Um, while you could be a domain expert or you might think you're a domain expert, particularly if you're a marketeer, no one really wants to hear the sound of your voice. What they really want to hear is the voice of the customer. And if you can't represent that, then you really have no value add. You become a great marketeer when you can actually take the voice of the customer and then say, and let me tell you the context and the day in the life, and then maybe put it in context of the rest of the business model. But you asked for an example of um, what I had learned in a startup, and that was the uh, when they used to teach you uh, entrepreneurship with a two-by-four to the side of your head.